20 Minute Tips, flagship episode 314. I'm the host, Jamie, and I'm joined by Martin Mealy. Yes. And Stephen. What's happening? Oh, well, nothing. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. Literally nothing's happened because uh, the football's cancelled. Uh, well, the football has been paused because there has been a national tragedy uh, and the football authorities thought best thing to do uh, after the national tragedy was to... Panic. Panic, yeah, yeah. Panic. yeah. And what they didn't do was maybe take a minute to realise that people like football, people want to go to football. Um, if you are sad because something happened, it might give you an opportunity even to switch off and enjoy the football if you're that yeah. way persuaded, if you're into kings and queens and all that sort of stuff, you might want to go and celebrate or take your mind off it. But what they did was they panicked and just cancelled everything and I think, Stephen, that's a gross overreaction. Oh, okay. of course it was. And that was played out, that was proven, in fact, by the fact that nothing else was cancelled it's only football that was cancelled on the mm. weekend there were even other sports it's not even as if right okay right all sport is off but you can still go to the cinema or you can go to the pub because you know it's a time of time of reflection you might want to go out and either celebrate or whatever right no you could do anything. you could do anything apart from going to the football you go to rugby cricket anything there was formula one on the weekend i know that's not in britain but mm. i mean it, a lot of british people watch it so I, I, I really don't understand why football was uh, cancelled because I, I know the reason. Right? It's a very obvious reason that football was cancelled, but I still can't understand why. What's the correlation? No. There's no correlation between the there being this national tragedy and disrespecting it by, by carrying on with football. It's uh, completely absurd to me. I think there's a situation mainly down south where... Prince William, I'm not too up on the princes, but one of them has an affiliation with the FA, the English FA. So having a kick about, well, he's meant to be doing duties or whatever. He's not, I could understand the tie in there. Maybe the English football might want to cancel or well, maybe not actually because the, the official guidance came out from uh, the government, I think it was. And it was basically like, I was actually quite surprised by the official guidance because it basically said, feel under no obligation to change any way of life. Yeah. Feel under no obligation to do even anything. It wasn't even, we will observe a minute silence at whatever or make sure you wear black armbands. The official guidance was, look, life goes on and you just need to continue. And that's not really what happened. I mean, there are, you could look at that from another perspective. If you were this way inclined, see, you were into like kings and queens and dukes and knaves and princes wizards and, and that, yeah. wizards and masters of coin and all <laughs> that. If you say wizards or lizards, <laughs> well, <laughs> wizards. <laughs> if you're into all that Game of Thrones type stuff and you wanted to have a joyous occasion about it, we're better than say Ibrox Park <laughs> to to do such a thing, you know. And they'll feel really left out by it. But I was. I wasn't surprised though when the football was cancelled and I wasn't surprised either Stephen when the SFA or the SPFL or whoever it was waited to the English made their decision. Oh of course Because yeah. that was basically what they were looking to do wasn't it? They don't have any independent thought. They just wanted <laughs> no. to wait and see what England did. I, I, th I think Scottish football was in a somewhat unique position as well because they were going to have to deal with a certain people mm. in inverted commas right. Regardless of what happened here what we were faced with was the, when the news started coming through, not not the not the news, but the the reaction to it, and I, as it got towards the weekend, what we're we going to do about the football, there was some chat there about how it was going to be left up to the individual clubs to decide, and I was looking forward to that because <laughs> yes. we, we all know what would have happened there. Mm. I was really looking forward to a potential scenario where Celtic didn't, or Celtic played rather, sorry, and Rangers didn't, out of respect, leaving them a potential eight points behind and. Months and months and months of greeting about fixture congestion, yeah. which we're all faced with now as well. Though, see, joking aside, that's what that's the the sinking boat we're in now because mm. of this nonsense. And we're all now in a extremely tight schedule. World it's already Cup. it's it's already it'll be, an, it'll be next year before the games yeah, are played. It's already an extraordinary season in that regard. It's a World Cup, so we're we're tight as a butler's cuff here when mm. it comes to actually fitting these fixtures in and we've gone and just basically hamstrung ourselves trying to squeeze this extra one in I don't know what's going to happen this weekend coming by the time you see this some resolution may have been struck but uh, I'm led to believe going that ahead the, apparently the, 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 that's, it's going ahead dependent on police yeah. resources mm. which we don't know well I watched a thing on the news and again this might be redundant by the time podcast comes out but I watched a thing or I heard a thing on the radio today that says like they're expecting 2 million people in London right. and they literally don't have the police to accommodate that no. many people so they're going to have to pull police from all over the UK to help police this but also there's sporting events on all of the it's I mean 
it's almost like we're completely unprepared for something we all knew was going to happen at some <laughs> point in the last 20 years. 20 years. years. That, that's the problem, isn't it? We all sort of thought, right, when, when this does happen, it's going to be, there will be something in place where everything mm. either goes or it all stays. Yet football's the thing that's went and everything else has stayed. So if they kind of painted themselves into a couple, well, it's weird they back themselves into the corner here because they can't really cancel another set of games this weekend, but it probably should be this weekend yeah, yeah, that would it. be the one that would get cancelled because that makes more sense. But to just fly in there and go, I'll cancel these games <laughs> and then everybody <laughs> yeah. else, are, they're just going to keep going because that's the protocol. It just, it's again the, the guidance and governance. Yeah, again, is, is, is the, the funeral, is that next week Monday. then? Monday. Right. Yeah, Monday. So what you're going to have is on the weekend that the national tragedy happened, you're going to have no games of football, but you're going to have lots and lots of games of football on probably the more, um, so I don't want, is it important? I don't know, but you know what I mean? The more significant yeah, weekend, yeah, yeah, the more. you're going to have the full, the full calendar of thing. And I think there's, I think the elephant in the room here is that there was probably a, an attempt to avoid uh, protests and yeah. songs that didn't um, go along with the the prevailing wind of where people want us to be and how people expect you to feel about these things. There was clearly going to be protests, um, at which hundred percent should be allowed. If you oh, want, to, yeah, uh, but- there's no. no it, I felt that I didn't even need to say that, but it, this is the internet, and sometimes you have to say things that don't need said. Protests, are a bit, a bit too heavy, isn't it? It would have mm. been people interrupting the minute silence. Is, is that? Is oh, there that, would have been much more than that. There, there would, have, would been, have been songs, but I don't know if MD would have been, there would have been a mass gathering of protest. No, there that. wouldn't have been a mass gathering of protest, but I mean, at the games, you know, people, I think what they want is for these games to go ahead, as you say, minute silence, everyone observes it. Ibrox Park will be do their thing with banners and all that sort of stuff. They, they were away from and, home. So oh, was, are they? Are they, they would have been. Oh, they would have been. So, but what they want is they want that message going cannons. out. <laughs> so that's, look, any excuse to wheel out the cannons <laughs> and <laughs> paratroopers and guys abseiling. Um, <laughs> That's what they'll do, and that's the sort of prevailing attitude that people want. But what you're going to have is not just at Celtic Park, not just for the Celtic game, but other football stadiums around the country. You're going to have people Liverpool as well that are no, no buying into this sort of narrative. And I think there's an element of God, we can't. How do we stop this happening? When I mean, that shouldn't be the attitude at all. Um, well, well he... one th- putting this, kicking it down the can, or kicking the can down the street rather, a week hasn't solved that problem. But we're still going to be faced with being around the funeral of this and still having to react to it in some way. Maybe people are going to be even more, in fact, people will be even more annoyed that they had a, a weekend of football taken away from them mm. for what I can gather is absolutely no reason, absolutely no fathomable reason as I sit here. And two, let's see if your thing here that we're trying to get across here is so politically and socially contentious that that's a strong possibility that will happen at certain games. Hearts have already done it, right? So it's not just Celtic. Hearts have already yeah. interrupted the minute silence and we're off fighting with each other. Some are singing God Save the Queen. Mm. Some are shouting at each other. Some are fighting and all that. That happened at Tynecastle. Never mind Celtic. So if if your thing here is likely to cause so much contention among just the general football going public, maybe think about what, what it is in the first place then. Yeah. Maybe think about what that thing is and why we're forcing people to observe it. It's maybe what you're saying is keep politics out of football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't suppose. have a minute of silence at the game. Just yeah. keep the politics out of the football. Mel, anything else to add? Oh, it's easy to go, it's going to be Celtic and Liverpool, but well, I think there'll be a lot more and a mm-hmm. lot more teams that maybe people will be shocked by because honestly, seeing the reaction after this, is there going to be a lot of grounds that completely observe a minute silence over this? I very much doubt it. And at the end of the day, cares. <laughs> you, you should be allowed to yeah. protest these things if you want. We apparently live in a healthy democracy and if people want to go to a football ground and they want to boo or they want to let their feelings known about this sort of thing, then you can't just cancel games in an effort to avoid that. And then also there's like an insidious thing that I think where who's setting the agenda here? Well, it's the people who... Right, well, we we need to respect this, and there must be proper. And uh, why why is that the agenda? The agenda yeah, should be the games go ahead, and the way people react is the way people react. Well, I, I started this by saying it was panic, and I, I firmly believe that because mm. Scottish, well, and English football as well, which you can maybe more understand if people are into that kind of thing down here. I know they are up here, but maybe more so down there. Football in this scenario has come across a little bit like the person who turned up to the party in fancy dress not really knowing that that wasn't the vibe because Mm. (laughs) I feel like the whole world the whole of Britain anyway has been gearing up to this event for 
decades now. I mean, yeah. so it was 96, right? So we're gearing up to this and the whole time, all the jokes were like, oh, a couple of weeks off, it's going to be full North Korea. Mm. Right? It's going to be like, I mean, obviously this pre predates the, the COVID lockdown, that kind of, that, that attitude towards it. Oh, it's going to be like, no, everything's going to be shut and all that. And then nothing happened. Nothing. nothing happened at all. Everything was open. Nobody was after work at all, as far as I'm, I know. And then football just jumped the gun and went like, well, we're off. We're off. We're, how, how could we imagine having football on this occasion, on this day of days? Why would we even dream of disrespecting the country like this? Meanwhile, the ruggers is on, the golf's <laughs> on. <laughs> Horse racing's on, darts, bowls, tiddlywinks, um, chess, everything you can imagine is on. All the dignified sports. All the, dig all the dignified <laughs> sports, just the one that the working class people like that got cancelled yeah. so they can uh, appreciate. Um, I, 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 I did watch, just to end on this, I did watch a wee clip of a, I saw it on TikTok with King Charles, by the way. Anytime someone says King Charles, <laughs> I immediately think they're going to say Spaniel after A wee it. dog. Aye, Aye. King Charles Spaniel. He met Liz Truss, who is the new PM, and he said... Well, this is, I think his exact words were, this is the day I've been dreading, but we all just need to get on with it. And I thought, if, if he's saying that, <laughs> he's more. open the gates, <laughs> let us moan our heads of state. <laughs> it's, it's <going> to be, <laughs> his mum. And he's like, oh, blah, we just need to get on with it. Eh? Meanwhile, the SPFL, no. He, he to... could barely keep the smile off his face. <laughs> I've been promoted. <laughs> Couldn't we take his chubby little fingers on that crown? <laughs> good news and bad news. <laughs> yeah, so, it was good news and irrelevant news. It's going to be, well, for Britain or the world's weirdest football team, mm. this is a chance for them to stop that nonsense of hanging a picture in their dressing room. But they won't, no. of course. I saw a thing, a debate where they were like, what do we do with the portrait of the Queen? Do we keep it up? Or do we put up the, the portrait of the new king next to the new queen? And I thought, no, no, you can't. Because queens and kings go back thousands of years. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to do that, then you need to find a picture of all the other ones that I don't know the name of. <laughs> so that for continuity's sake, you need, to, you need to make your minds up very clearly here. Or just don't have a picture of the yeah. queen up in the dressing room. Simple as tidier, isn't it? Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, anyway, from the world's most successful football team to the world's most uh, successful football team, for real though, um, for Real For from, Real From Royal to Real Which you, is Spanish for Royal Is it? <laughs> yes, well it is. <laughs> Real Madrid came to Celtic Park They did end up beating us Stephen 3-0 uh, But Melly I could not be prouder of my team Because we lost But we lost on our own terms Yeah and that's what we asked for last mm. week I think going into the game We were all confident And me and Stephen spoke about it And at the match he said Look this is all we can ask We are going into a game against Real Madrid And we think we can get something here We think we can go out there and win, draw, imagine we had a one on mm. last week after the week we had, but it wasn't to be. And look, as, as what you're saying, you're proud of the team because we didn't just go there and look, did all right, avoided mm. a, an absolute shellacking. We went and played football and went at them and matched them. Potentially a better team in the first half. And then they came out and decided we are really going to play this half instead of just playing. And boy, oh boy, I have seen a lot of teams uh, playing against Celtic this isn't the best team player wise but the most ruthless and mm. clinical team mm. I've ever seen they didn't create many clear cut chances but the ones they did create they took and I was just that when you can sort of compress decompress after the game you go well that was pretty special from them mm. because creating one or two chances and they bagged every one of them they played very well but probably could have played better you're like that is a proper team Stephen, one thing I'm trying to get across here is it wasn't a, um, we weren't like heroic in defeat. And that is not to say that that was a like a criticism, but heroic in the defeat suggests that you went and you were the plucky underdogs and you threw yourself in front of the ball and you were clearing things off the line and you were holding on by the skin of your teeth and by God, the bloody boys, they were so close. No, no, we took on Real Madrid toe to toe, looked them in the eye, played our football, didn't compromise our style, gave them something to think about. A lot of our players wouldn't have looked... Real, Real Hattati would not have looked out of place in yeah. that Real Madrid team on the night. Callum McGregor, there's a couple of players that we'll go on to talk about. And it wasn't like plucky underdogness. It was, we belong to we belong here. We deserve to be in this company. Oh, yeah, it was a great performance for... I mean, I, I, I don't want to get carried away. Of course, it was a defeat, and a, a relatively heavy defeat at yeah. home, something we're not accustomed to. We're not really... Is it, though? Is, I mean, teams lose 3-0 to Real Madrid all the time. Yeah, well, well I, I just mean, on the bare numbers of mm. it, like, losing 3-0 at home is never a great thing, which I, I just wanted to kind of temper what I was saying a wee bit, because I, said, I started by saying it was a great performance, which, you know... I, 
context is important mm. here. It was Real Madrid. With, with games like that, you need a lot of things to go your way. Mm -hmm. But Celtic did their part in it. They played their part in that game. They took the game to Real Madrid. I, I watched it back since. because It feels like ages ago since this game because we had some football cancelled at the weekend, which I've already spoken about. It feels like about a month ago we played yeah. Real Madrid. So I've watched it back and I was just I was kind of mentally taking notes. I was like, right, very early on we've pressed Real Madrid into making a mistake. Thibaut Courtois booted the ball right at the park. There was that, right? Then Abada had a chance. It was deflected wide. And then I was like, it's a pretty good start. And I looked at the clock. It was 27 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 27 seconds on the clock when both of those things had happened. So I thought, right, maybe, maybe I've just sort of I've overdone it in my mm. head. I've, I, but it, it, in fairness to Celtic, it was basically the whole half. Took, it was. took the game to them the entire half. And what I mean by it, look, would, if, see if you compare this to the Barcelona game from 10 years ago. Now, I never said many years ago, it was 10 years ago now. If you compare it to that game, what you need on occasions like this when you're playing such a good team is for a lot of things to go your way. Boy. You maybe need for one or two of their players to just not quite click. You're maybe wait. You, you need for that, that team to miss one or two of their chances, one or two of their easy chances. Mel, you've already said they simply just didn't do that. They scored the ones they got. And you, the, the fact of the matter is, on the night, I don't think they had a single, even mediocre performance no. at all. I've, having watched it back now, every single player on the park for them was excellent. Some more than others, uh, which we'll make get into as well. But I think nothing really happened for Celtic. We didn't get any breaks. Celtic... Celtic happened to Real Madrid is, is my point here. They created mm. chances in the first half, hit the post as well. Dyson Maida in the second half had a, a decent chance as well. The, the, the thing is, scored one of them, it might have just made them angry and they, they could have taken over again. But that's not how it felt at the time. Mm. It didn't feel like that at all. In the stadium, we felt, if we can just go ahead here, that's something to cling on to. That's something to get behind. It just didn't happen for us on the night, sadly. Well, I think we're brushing over these chances and we're saying, oh, if this happened and that happened. And I think really these are the crux to it because you, I know it's, it is a cliche, but I think that's the story of the game for me because the performance was there. Yep. The team yeah. performance was there. The individual performances was there. The the work rate was there. I, I heard a stat somewhere. I tried to find it before we came on. I can find. It. I heard Celtic collectively as a team ran ten k further than Real Madrid in that game. Really? So the, the press was there. Everything that you wanted to see for Celtic was there. The chance creation was there. There was a few players I thought who could have performed better, but we missed our chances. Mm -hmm. And you simply cannot expect to beat a team like Real Madrid and miss those chances because when Real Madrid get the chances, like you say. They put them away. Now, they didn't put all the chances away. Made some good tackles. Um, I nearly called him Fraser Foster, made a good save, but it was very yeah. Foster-esque, yeah. the save he made. Um, and, and we just missed it. I think Abada had probably two. McGregor hits the inside of the post and it's no in the back of the net. Now, he said we got to talk to him on the At The Match podcast, patreon.com slash 20 Minute Times. And he says, I don't know how that stayed out. I mean, you don't know how that stayed out. And then Maeda, you cannot miss a chance like that falls to Maeda or that one of the, the second chance that Abada got. And expect to beat Real Madrid. You just this can't do it. This is my whole point. It's like you you need some of those to go in. You need something to go, the old cliche, something to go in off your ass, and you hope that they hit the post. Yeah. They hit the post. They're getting frustrated. They're creating chances and misses them. They're maybe getting a little bit frustrated that they're not beating this you know, European minnow that they're coming up against. Mm. No one in the Champions League for five years. That's what you're hoping for. But we didn't get any of these things, which is the unfortunate thing. I, I have to be realistic. You do need all of these things to go your way when you're playing against Real Madrid, even at home. I know we're a big club and all that, but that doesn't win you games against teams that can... I mean, they made substitutions. They brought in Eden Hazard, who was two or three years ago was one of the best players yeah. in Europe. They brought on Rudiger because they got an injury and he is a Champions League winner, not with Real Madrid. They bought a Champions mm. League winner to come into this team and who didn't start. That's what you're up against. And for we just didn't get any of the breaks. And I'm not talking about just lucky things here and there on the pitch the break of the ball around that I'm talking about these big key moments that just didn't go our way and we kind of ran out of fuel and as far we ran out of ammunition as, as far as the missing the chances went Melly because see when we're playing at home I think we ended up I think we got six shots on goal or four shots on goal Madrid got six and ended up scoring three then we got four and scored none right on target when we're playing anyone else at home we can afford to miss those chances because yeah. yeah. we know we're going to get 12, 13, 14 shots on target, sometimes right. up to 25 shots on goal, you know, on and off target. But you're not going to get that against Real Madrid. I don't want to labour the point too much, but all I'm trying to do now is illustrate that's the gulf. The difference oh, yeah. between what we're up against every week is 
Ack will miss that, it's all right. Ack will miss that, it's all right. And I, I'm not saying the player, I'm not accusing the players of that. They know. Abada knows when he misses that chance, he's might not get another one for the whole game. Maeda knows when you miss for four yards, you're probably not going to get another one. And it's just that, that's the, the, the sort of gulf that we need to overcome. We need to be ruthless. Yeah, this is the levels, isn't it? We, we say this all the time. It's about that, this wee learning curve that hmm. unfortunately we'll have to learn on the job right now. We're, we're in it. We don't have yeah. a year to bed into this Champions League. You're in and you need to start winning. And it's but do you think that's managerial? Do you think it's players, I suppose, I'm getting to? Because Andrew would say, well, my system kind of worked here, but the players that it fell to just couldn't get the finish. Whereas when it falls to the Real Madrid players, they know they only, they only need one chance after the thing, right? Gone. I don't know if it's about having one chance. I mm. just think it's these guys are better at what they do than Celtic are. Mm. And what does Celtic do about that? Nothing. The reason every player's at Celtic is because they're not at that level. They want to get to that level, so they need to go through this to maybe get to that. This will be one where maybe players will have to have to have a look at themselves and go, "Look, I think I played really well there, but maybe could I improve on my finishing? Could I improve on my passing?" Juranovic might think I might need to scan a bit more, be mm. more aware of what's around me. Every player will have learned so much from that game, more than they have learned they've played in 38 Scottish games last season. And this is what you want to aspire to. Every player out there will want to go, do you know what? I think I can play at this level regularly and try and get there. The thing about the finishing is, yes, maybe we missed one or two chances, but what do you do about that? Well, well You can't replicate that in any way. So if a player misses a chance, it happens. Maeda's one's probably the one you think... Ah, he's got to do better. If Kyogo or Jota missed that, I don't think a lot's made of it, but because some people doubt Maeda's technical ability, sometimes there's a bit more made of it. But at the end of the day, he was in the position, it just didn't work out. And look, you can go on about, we didn't take these chances, but we created these chances, and that's probably better than not missing them, mm. of course it is. But if you're there making these chances against these teams, it's going to come at some point. It just would think of the break that night. I, I think Melly says that what do you do about these missed chances? And really there's not an awful lot you can do because before the game, one of my concerns was Abada. Right? And uh, uh, look, people get very defensive about Abada and he's a good young player and his contribution's brilliant. But I thought, his crossing's not great and we're not going to get many opportunities to get the ball in the box. Yeah. And if it if it's going down his side all the time and he's missing crosses, I'm going to be quite frustrated watching that. And then I thought to myself, well, he's more instinctive. You yeah. know, Abada's good coming at the back post, hitting it quite instinctive finisher. And I just worried that too many, too many good chances would break down when they got to Abada. And that's kind of what happened with him, right? However... Tans on Miller's question, what do you do about that? Well, the other option was Maeda, and he misses a sitter as well. <laughs> yeah. So really, there wasn't a great deal we could have done about it. I know, you could argue that if Abada had been in the same position, which is not how it works, that's Aye. not how football works, they don't have the exact same instincts for picking up uh, positions. You could argue, though, if you just just transplanted Abada into that chance, it's probably in the mm. back of the net, isn't it? Because that's what he's good at. That's what he's really good at. I, I, would, I would defend Maeda, though, because I think that chance is... It's close range, but it's quite hard to take because Juranovic has, uh, he's not even fizzed across. He has basically aimed a shot at Maida's feet. It's not even in front of him where he could stick out a toe. It's directly between his yeah. feet and he can't organise his feet quick enough because it's it's been rattled into him. So I think, <laughs> a I'm, chilling image. I think, <laughs> I think Maeda's quite good with the ones he doesn't have to think about. Yeah, it's yeah. maybe the ones he has to think about mm. and he has time that he, he maybe gets it a bit wrong. Abada as well. I mean, Abada had a big chance early on, not the one that was deflected way. But I think that might have been on target, actually, when you, when you look at, uh, when you watch it back, rather. But he had a big chance where he was not so much clean through but he shot from quite far out basically straight at Courtois and I thought right that's that's not the kind of thing you want Abada on no. to do you yeah. want you want him to be on the end of things but I thought that was slightly I mean the guy's 20 years old playing in his first Champions League game I guess one of the best goalkeepers I, yeah that is I thought it was my main thought there was that's very naive to think you're going to beat Courtois from that mm. angle from that distance I, I don't think there was ever any chance of him uh, scoring that but Again, we're probably going to end up talking a lot about it tonight. It's, the, it's about learning, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And look, these that team, I don't want to come across all pure tin pot and celebrating the fact we've lost at home at Real Madrid. But again, we have to be realistic here. We're, we were never going to win that game now that we've seen the way it played out, right? Mm -hmm. So that we're never going to actually win it. But the 
for me, the most important thing is that... Now that we've seen how it played out, incidentally, I, I want to just reaffirm that point because yeah, it yeah, seems well, like something that people might pick you up wrongly on. Yeah, well, my, my, my overall point is that I went to that game really confident they yeah. were going to take it and that's that doesn't marry up with what actually happened in the game because Real Madrid are just they're simply much better. They're much better fighter than us <laughs> as a uh, Ace Ventura to... That must be a rare quote from Ace Ventura, to Ace Ventura to when nature calls. Yeah, I think we've actually used that one in this yeah, podcast man, before. Man. Manscaped product alert. You asked for it and they listened. Our friends at Manscaped just brought the ultra smooth package to Europe. Everyone knows by now that the Lawnmower 4.0 is the best electric shaver for your balls. But if you're looking for a closer shave or prefer to go completely bare down there, <laughs> off putting, uh, then the ultra smooth package is the perfect set. It's time to shave that bush of yours, off putting again, and get right to the roots by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code. Tim's. That's right, Jamie. The Ultra Smooth Package is a specialised groin shaving kit yep, to help you buff, protect and smooth your most sensitive areas. I'm talking crop shaver razor, crop exfoliator and crop gel. Men, you no longer have to borrow your ladies razor for that precise trim. It's time to get up close and personal with the best tools for the job, the Ultra Smooth Package from Manscaped. It's just a ball sack trimmer, Jamie. <laughs> yes, it is, Stephen. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TIMS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code TIMS at manscaped.com. Smooth out your fellas with the new ultra smooth package, really off putting, from the fellas at Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. But yeah, I was really confident going to the game. And really, that's all I can ask. Mel has already said that. That's all I can ask of a Celtic team because. We've been doing this podcast a long time and we've had a lot of European games, even Champions League games back in the day. It feels weird to say that. It's been so long since we've mm. actually done Champions League games on here. But I, I was actually confident and we, when we were doing it back then, the kind of running, like kind of tee-hee we had about the, the Champions League was, oh, we're going to get gubbed there. Eh? We're mm. going to get gubbed. I didn't feel like that at all. And but with what Ange was talking about before the game, I have to sort of reaffirm my belief in what he was saying. He was talking about how it was a it was a chance to actually test yourself. And by test yourself, that's not just by turning up on the pitch as with a team better than you. That's not testing yourself you know, inherently. Mm. Testing yourself is playing the way you want to play football, playing the way you believe is the best opportunity for you to win the game. And doing that against a team that for well, the world thinks will will crush you and trying to put on a performance. That's what gives me confidence and that's what really was the, the test. And we will learn an awful lot more from doing that. These players will learn an awful lot 100%. more from doing that than playing 5 4 one and putting the ball long and trying to play for fouls in the edge of the box and all that kind of stuff. And that is my, that's my whole point about the... I don't want to really drag us back into that tedious Scottish football thing, right? Mm. But it was never about like trying to beat Celtic and, playing, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them football-wise and the budgets and all that kind of stuff. But Celtic have proven that you can do it. I lost the game. Of course, mm -hmm. they lost the game fairly comfortably in the second half. But we all stayed behind that night. We stayed behind singing the manager's name mm -hmm. because of what Celtic had shown us out there. No, because we're daft happy clappers and we were just <laughs> happy with, with anything we see out there. It's because we were proud of the performance that Celtic put in against arguably the best team in the world. And that's that was a, it's the hope you're talking about you, you, yeah, with, yeah. with confidence. And that is... That's truly the gift that Ange has given us. <laughs> is is your you're, greatest you're, gift of all? Ah, you're going up and you and you're coming in with hope, and you're coming in with you know what? My team might be able to do something today. And I heard and I heard that it might have been um, I can't remember what radio station it was, but I think it might be an English one. And they were out in Glasgow and they were interviewing people, and every single Celtic fan was like, "No, I think we'll take something off them yeah, today." Right. And it, uh, you might look back and you go, oh, "It was a wee bit misguided. No way we're going." But I don't think a Celtic victory was as far off as you think. That game could have ended a number of different ways. Sure, you know, high Vegas odds, 9-10 to 1 that Real Madrid were going to win that game every time. But Celtic definitely had a chance of getting something out of that game. And going into the game with the, the hope and the the ambition and the, I don't know the word I'm looking for, Melly, so I'm just going to come to you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get what you're saying, even though you didn't actually say it. Mm. But uh, <laughs> it's looking back at it, look, look what Stephen said, look, Celtic went there and they played their game. So what was missing from the game? Mm. And I kind of feel just that you know, we need a bit of everything to get something out of these games. And we didn't have that luck, maybe that break. Real Madrid's goal, they get a break in the middle of the park for one of them. There's uh, a bit of luck in some of their goals. But thinking back to the last sort of 
big result Celtic had in the Champions League, the Man City game, because look, it's been what, nine years since we won a Champions League game at home. The Man City game, the first goal potentially offside, it hits off Dembele's chest after a header. Kieran Tierney's goal takes a massive deflection and it's down as an OG. And then the cross comes in and Dembele does a piece of magic. Mm. Celtic didn't really create any more chances than they did against Real yeah, Madrid, yeah. but we got three. Was they deserved the goals, but we get three bits that it all fell for us, and we still didn't come away with the victory that night. And the Real Madrid game, we just simply didn't come up with that. It didn't happen for us, but we did absolutely everything else right. Because, as you're saying, Jamie, I can't remember Carter Vickers or Jens making big last ditch tackles. There was no nothing cleared off the line. There was no absolute period of pressure where you thought we are on the ropes here we need to get out of here I didn't think that was Celtic mm. I thought when we got the ball we tried to play our way, our way out and done it well it's just just didn't go for us on the night and I think that's why everybody's sort of accepting of this I was like right maybe finish a chance or two but Real Madrid it wasn't as if they brought a second team it was their full strength team and as Stephen said they all came out and they played well like, okay. even some of the players you think well, we can maybe target the full backs they're not world class players they're not household names they are very very good players they were class mm. absolutely class and you're just looking at every player on that Madrid team and there was times in the game where Celtic had a bit of an edge and the crowd was on them didn't face a single player in that Real Madrid team not one of them looked as if they were letting the ball slip away or scared to get on the ball they all just looked like we do this all the yeah. time and they just kept passing the ball about and trying to frustrate Celtic and you're like this is where They've already learned everything they need to know, but Celtic are at the very start of that journey, so let's just enjoy it now. I know, when you've got guys like Tony Cruz, <laughs> who's won I know. almost everything there is to win three <laughs> yeah. times, and Modric in midfield, it's going to take a lot to sort of um, spook these guys. But I think there's, I think one of the other telling things about the game, Stephen, is when you just want to single Celtic players out for praise, you're looking at Celtic's more attacking players. You know what I mean? It's not, yeah. wow, what a defensive performance. You're looking at Matt O'Reilly, Wow. Yeah. I mean, every week that goes by, that guy's just looking every single inch an absolute superstar. You're looking at Rio Hatati. Unbelievable. Some of the passing on display from Hatati. Callum McGregor, every time he's faced with a challenge, he takes it up. Yakimakis, I thought, one, one of the unsung heroes of that game. The Real Madrid centre halves did not like dealing with that guy. No, Militao. Not, for, not, North, not for one minute did they like dealing with him. And I actually thought. He probably caused them more problems than Kyogo because Kyogo maybe plays away they're more used to playing. Yak, and they called him Diego Costa there. But he, <laughs> yeah. Yak, oh, he's gazumped, gazumped by Wolves, by uh, the way. Should have brought him home. <laughs> but yeah, we don't need them. We've got Yak and Marcus. Yeah, but the, the performance he put in was sensational. I, I mean, he and Militao had a, a bit of a, a ding dong battle, mm. one of those kind of old fashioned big guy up front versus the big guy at the back battles. And Militao went off injured. Shat it. Yes. Well, off injured. So did Benzema. Yeah, yeah. Benzema went off as well. But Rudiger comes on the second half. And again, as I said, Champions League winner with mm -hmm. Chelsea just last or the previous year, the year before Real Madrid won it. So it's not, as a, it's not exactly a massive step down in quality as well. But Yakimak is deserved. I thought the, I, I saw the, the kind of the other side of the, all the big clubs get all the decisions thing, if you know what I mean. Look, mm. Celtic and Rangers are often accused of getting all the big decisions in Scotland when you, you get the Diddy teams, you know, yeah. piping up. But uh, I saw a little bit of that. I thought... There was a lot of that. I thought Yakimakis was harshly treated a couple of times just by being physical with their centre half. Mm. Sometimes I feel he doesn't help himself, but no. there was one he got, he controlled it on his chest in the box and just theatrically froze himself yes. down. Yes. Yes. Mate, you had the ball, like, you don't need to do this. And... I was, if I can see it for here, the ref <laughs> can see it. Uh, I know. Uh, but, um, obviously, we'll talk about individual performances, and we already are, but you'll, again, the context of this is you look at the Real Madrid team, their right side is unbelievable, absolutely mm. unbelievable. If you include Modric in that, who appears kind of just about everywhere, but it is ostensibly their right-sided central midfielder of a, of a three. You've got Valverde ahead of him and Carvajal, Behind them, their right side was absolutely astonishing on the night. I thought they and were the three the best. He's players. probably target because <laughs> I didn't really know much about Valverde. And he's probably the best player in the world. I, 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 having looked at, glanced across the stats afterwards, if you've got right, middle, left of mm. the channels that you can attack down, over fifty percent of their attacks and their most real productive attacks were down their right side for the game as well. So it was obviously a thing that they're they're used to as well. But 
I thought Greg Taylor was was great again, mm. uh, like just typically really brilliant, uh, especially in the face of what he was up against that night as well. Jota and Abada have a lot to learn at that level. Oh, I yes. think it's I think it's difficult for the creative flair players to stand out in a game like that where you're really up against it and you're really up against a team that are much better than you and come up against better players than you can possibly offer as well. But in terms of their I don't think Abada get past these man once. And I'd, do you know what? I'm not even criticising it. I don't even expect them to get no. past a guy like that at all. I mean, what, what are you really going to get? You're maybe going to get past them once or twice before being closed down by maybe one of the centre-halves anyway. So that, that's, that's how good they are. But I think they need to maybe work on their defensive, yeah, definitely. Their defensive side of things because did you think we th- did suffer quite a bit down, down the flanks. And it's just... Juranovic and Taylor can only do so much um, mm. before you know they're being you know, double teamed and you're know, doubled up on, tripled up on, and all that. So it's very difficult if your if your wingers are getting a little bit maybe spooked is maybe the wrong word, right? But I just I think they they didn't really show the same co- level of confidence that they do in I think domestic football. I think Jota showed a lot of that. Yeah. What, what do you think? I think two things happened. I think Abada just had a sort of I suppose it's maybe faint praise a wee bit but he had a very typical Abada performance yeah. he had a, compared to how we're used to seeing him like in the Rangers game for example he, nice. he, he hubbed at half time so that's it, it was a story well it was tells, but he wasn't like awful whereas yeah. you're looking at Jota and it's probably because of the past record that he's got Stephen I thought I think the perform, I think the occasion got a, a wee bit too much of Jota and it wasn't it wasn't just so much a case of coming up there against the world class defenders and they're nicking the ball off him it was no showing for the ball or maybe mm. getting rid of it a wee bit quicker than he usually does instead of taking the guy on he would take him on and beat him he would beat him and then uh, uh, towards the end of the first half he was giving the ball away this passing was a bit poor and I just thought I think the occasion I just think he just needs to believe in himself a wee bit more he just needs to believe he belongs at this level I think that was maybe what held Jota back yeah again I just I can't help but just go back to the fact that these players will learn a lot from that yeah. they're, they're a huge huge amount from that game that's not to say that they're going to take it directly into the games in the Champions League right away. The, this whole Champions League group will be a huge learning curve for, mm. for these players. There's no doubt about that. But I, th- I thought Jota came into it a wee bit. I thought he put in a couple of decent crosses, a couple of nice balls into into towards Jackie Marcus. And again, what you're up against here is it's not only superior ability, but they're just a little bit more street savvy than, yeah. mm. than Celtic are. There's a fair chance if a centre half gets into a tussle with Yakimakis in the box and goes down, the ref's going to blow for that every single yeah. time. So Jota was pinging in a couple of crosses. All of a sudden, Yakimakis has got a guy lying at his feet, and the ball just goes out the other side. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not making accusations of cheating or anything like that. This is just what happens, and yeah. Celtic are used to it at all. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I think the two wide players could have played better, but I've not really got a problem with how they perform going forward. It was more how they how they were going back the way. Mm. I think they could have gave more protection to their fullbacks. And it was something I noticed in the, the Rangers game that Juranovic and somebody else, I can't remember who, had to shout at Abada a couple of times during that game to track back. Mm. And then a couple of minutes he gets subbed it off despite scoring two goals. But that's why I'd have maybe started Maeda with Abada's form. But yeah. I just feel if look, Jota and Maeda, it's going to be difficult no matter what. I think they gave as good as they could but they could do so much better but there's no real excuse for not working back the way if mm. you're not having a good game I always say make sure the guy you're up against has a terrible game their two fullbacks were really good and that's because a lot of the time they had space or the run wasn't matched so when Real Madrid went beyond them they didn't they quite go back the way they as quick as they should and it meant it opened up space for somebody else and that's where Celtic were carved open a couple of times so that's the only criticism I would have of them it could have done a wee bit better going forward but going back the way had to work a lot harder for me Right I think we've got the criticisms of the way let's talk about some positives Matt O'Reilly Stephen oh, Fantastic what a player there was a, a occasion in the first half where it, would talk, it might sound a bit like OTT saying that players wouldn't look at a place in that team, and I, but I don't think it's massively exaggerating. Could no. they could they play at that level for the, the the consistency throughout a season that it takes to play for a club like Real Madrid? I doubt it. But on a on a one occasion that you can go into a game like that and look like you belong on the pitch with these players, because we're talking about Luka Modric and the previously I mentioned. Tony Cruz, and I thought um, Chouameni, if that's mm. how you pronounce it, I thought he was excellent yeah. as well. They brought on that Camavinga, who we've played against before. I think he's only 19. He looked really good as well. So that's the kind of midfield uh, company you're keeping there. But there was an occasion quite early on where Matt O'Reilly just 
he just took a, one of those wee shuffles where he doesn't touch the ball, lets it come across him, just sort of drops his mm. shoulder and someone just ran past him and all of a sudden there was a load of space and I thought, do you know what, you're quite good at football. <laughs> <laughs> but th that was just one of those occasions where I thought, aye, you, you look like you belong at this level. It may, I mean, again, level is slightly subjective here. It's mm. not It's not necessarily Real Madrid, but he belongs in the Champions League. I don't think that, that was ever in doubt right enough. No, uh, I think a lot of teams really. will be watching him, yeah, yeah, uh, right. especially after that performance, especially after Hattati's performance. He was just sitting there just looking like, at times, he was looking at like peak Luka Modric. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just sitting back, pinging balls. You see the one where he, did he take a throw in for Greg Taylor? Oh, uh, yeah. And without even looking. Juranovic. Oh, uh, Juranovic. And without even looking, he just bat volleys it right across the Jota. Yeah, it's, it's went viral, but it is like sumptuous to watch. Um, and it's absolutely delicious pass. Uh, there's still things in his game I thought he could. Some of his positional play was a wee bit, but again, he's learning. But when the guy gets but You on, get that with him, don't you? He's yeah, a bit of a maverick. And I'm happy to accept that because he can do that pass mm. out there because look, looking about, well, probably every midfielder on the pitch could have actually done that because they're all class <laughs> but it's something we don't see very often and like you're looking for these guys like make a mistake get on it again every single the one of them in the midfield three did I thought Celtic's midfield three were brilliant like Hattati O'Reilly but Callum McGregor again like for a guy that's maybe been there and done it before to come in here and captain Celtic in the Champions League and put in that performance against that stat and that, that's not the first time he's went up against Modric or like that and not looked no, out no. of place so the guy is a class act and all that was missing from him was that goal but spoke to him after the game he's like I don't know how it didn't get in and that's just that wee millimetre or two slice of luck you need in these games that we simply didn't get but can't fault any performance in midfield Hattati's pass and Joe Hart's save I think mm. were the two I mean losing 3-0 at home no goals are in like to celebrate they were the two occasions that I jumped up in and like awe at what I'd, mm. I'd just witnessed. I mean, the, the, one of those, it was when you see Joe Hart's save back, it's a great save, yeah. but it's the goalkeeping cliche. You'd expect him to make it. He just yeah. came out and made himself big. But again, that's not what it felt like at the time. That's not, it felt massive at the time. A chance that it might have been varred off anyway, because yeah. um, if that indeed is a verb, varred, <laughs> but because it was it maybe marginally offside as he just sort of crossed the halfway line, maybe slightly too early. But the save felt amazing and the Hatati's pass, honestly, astonishing. It was out to Jota who was in loads of space. But to take that on the volley over your own shoulder, absolutely. He's been he's been doing that more and more recently, pinging out great passes just that right onto Abada's toes just to mm. take it right into his, his stride. But that one was the, the best of the lot. That's a phenomenal pass. Um, what do you feel about clapping off Luka Modric? <laughs> There's been a lot of moaning about that online and I thought, I thought... I don't look. I don't mind it. In fact, are you are you going to be so fucking po faced? Do you have to be so po faced about everything? I mean, it's at the end of the day, Luka Modric is one of these world class footballers. It's still a bit of an underdog, kind of. Do you know what I mean? He's existed in a period where I, I don't mean he's an underdog in so far as he's rubbish. What I mean is he's existed in a period where there's been several very great players, but you delete them and Luka Modric would be easily one of the best players in the world. Is he the Andy Murray of uh, of this kind, year, year in football? Kind of. Uh, do you know that's <laughs> it? And, you know, he's... he's, he's Tennis a, this week, is it? Uh, <laughs> no boxing analogy so far <laughs> yeah. this week. I was working up to a... So, <laughs> who, who were we in this analogy? If, if, we've, if we continue mm. the Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis, were we, were we officially... The, the underdogs we, were they Mike Tyson now and we were Leona Lewis yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I would never let happen by the way Leona Lewis is an angel and he would batter him <laughs> blood bath <laughs> <He> would, <laughs> you see someone tweeted us and went did you see Michael Owen made a boxing reference and I thought no but I wish I did um, um, was it good I don't know because the crucial thing is, is our, not ours if, are really bad so he couldn't have copied us <laughs> well not if Michael Owen made it you know, he, I mean yeah, he probably doesn't watch boxing it certainly wasn't a rocky one anyway but back, <laughs> back to my point um, so when you're, you're clapping look at he's a fairly inoffensive guy I just thought there's nothing wrong with this man guy you just stop being so fucking po-faced yeah, like, I don't I, I sat down and applaud them because you can appreciate good performances you can appreciate good players but mm. we seen both that night it wasn't as if people were just clapping because he's looking mm. Modric so you watch the guy and say this guy's going to be good and he, he was better than that uh, he was an absolute midfield masterclass I and, just love the efficiency of movement yeah. We'll look at Modric. Yeah. It's wonderful, he, and it's not just how much he runs with his body. It's the the ball comes in, and he's just like bump, and the, he's played it through to something. You're like, this guy's unbelievable. Thirty seven, the other day, thirty seven playing at the highest level. Still, a King Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's playing it bone the, dry as well. <laughs> <under> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> he is. Oh, um, it's been a long time since I've heard that. One. <laughs> there you go. Is that a class player just putting a class performance at the highest mm-hmm. level? So I think you can appreciate that as well, and just seeing him there going, do you know what that? That was unbelievable. Like, mm-hmm. You're seeing him there, and as you're saying, every movement he makes, it's all efficient. He's never wasting energy. He's never wasting a pass. You're like, wow, we that was impressive. I wasn't too wow, we. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't too impressed with jumping jellicles. That was a... <laughs> goody gumdrops. <laughs> Look at Modric is playing. Sound like one of the fucking railway children. <laughs> <laughs> Another reference for the kids. <laughs> all right, Bino. <laughs> so... Edith Blyton over here. <laughs> <laughs> but I was too impressed with mm. clapping off Benzema oh, my when he goes full off of muddy mints. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, mate. I just I was impressed with clapping off Benzema after going off injury. He didn't do it, did he? No, I don't. That, that is taking it a wee bit too far. Stephen, that oh sorry, <laughs> lashings some... and lashings of applause. Did yes, yes. It was... uh, I, can't, I don't think it matters either way. Like there's like these two entrenched camps mm. that are like, oh, you, you want to make the stadium a fearful place to come. I don't think like, it didn't affect them clearly. But mm. like booing them, you could have booed them all day and it wouldn't have affected his performance and likewise I, I, clapping him I don't think really affects anything whatsoever it's not for I don't do it I, mm. I, it's not for me not because I'm sitting there oh, sitting in my hands I, I refuse to applaud mm. it just doesn't enter my head to applaud a, an opposition player it, I, I don't have a problem with it at all as long as it's no over the top I don't want it getting pure soccer AM about it mm. I don't, like, every time he plays a pass we're like shh Shit! Oh, he plays a two. Tell me your own reaction in the sand every time Modric plays a pass. Oh my god, absolute lips. Uh, yeah, this can, that can be the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I wasn't like up standing up courtesy in the guy, but I just thought yeah. class, absolute yeah. class, and a bit of a polite applause. It, the atmosphere at Celtic Park when it well, okay. I mean, I just felt, I just felt my overriding emotion was it's so good to be back. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, because this, sorry, but. This team and especially this manager deserve this stage. I uh, no doubt. Uh, I said on our at the match podcast that we we did immediately after the game. Well, during the game and immediately afterwards that when I went in on my own, Melly had to go and get his press pass. You know, because mm. he's because he's important like that. I had to go and get his press pass um, for after the game for that little bit of content that we got after the game. But I went in on my own. I was just standing there and there was they were playing clips on um, on the big screen of previous Champions League big moments like the. The Nakamura free kick, Scott mm. McDonald scoring and all that, and I'm like, I'm getting emotional here. I'm, <laughs> I genuinely was. I'm not just saying that for like the for some hilarious banter here. I, I genuinely could feel like what it was, just what it was like, and it would, and that was proven as well when the absolute eruption of applause happened when the Champions League. A theme played mm. the theme played and the place absolutely erupted like a goal had been scored. I've never heard anything like yeah. it, and I've seen people who were just there as neutral, you know, just journalists mm. who, were, who were there covering for like ESPN or BT or whatever it was, they'd said they'd never seen anything like it, but just just the applauding of a theme plane. Yeah. To, and, and, and that's, and the, that's the, what added to it. The North Cove banner, tribute to Leprechaun in the Hood, which, <laughs> which was... <laughs> Which was absolutely... I've seen that. I've, I've seen, seen Leopard on the head, yeah. Nah, it's not bad. <laughs> uh, absolutely absolutely tremendous. Though. Never seen Raging Bull, but I have seen Leprechaun <laughs> on the head. Have you? I've ne- what have I never seen? And nothing if, nothing immediately comes to mind, but there's several good films I haven't seen. Platoon. <laughs> yeah, there, one. Never seen Platoon. Hey, listen, I've not done this properly for so long. If you like what we do on this podcast and you like the podcast and you would like some more... Some more features, some more videos, some more stuff centred around matches, reaction podcasts, patreon.com slash 20 minute tims. It keeps this podcast going, it gives you extra content, it supports us and lets us do what we do best, and that's cover Celtic. That's patreon.com slash 20 minute tims. There'll be a link in the bio. And if you're watching this and you've not subscribed on YouTube, please hit subscribe. We would really, really appreciate it. Uh, any final thoughts, Stephen, on the Real Madrid clash? I mean, We've got uh, Shakhtar up next. Yes. Um, yeah. We'll be doing some Patreon stuff for that, obviously. Marion Shved <laughs> scored twice. He did. Uh, Melly Shuddering this scored. Get your stick. He's yeah. going to score again. He <laughs> scored again at the weekend. He did. Now, it's not something that surprised me because for some reason I do remember when we signed him the first time, the feedback from his coach was I don't know why this kid leaves the country because every time he plays for a foreign team, mm. he, he can't do it. And I think he's left, he's been to the Ukraine. He, he started in Ukraine, left to go to Seville, it didn't work. Went back to Ukraine, it did work. Left to join us, it didn't work. Now he's back in the Ukraine and it seems to be working for him. Yeah, what have we learned from that so far? Basically, <laughs> mm. just never leave the Ukraine. Could... Unless you're Russian soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah. bit of political satire, a bit of political commentary there. Right yeah. off the door, we don't yeah. work on this, <laughs> this part of... 
<laughs> uh, right. Yes. By, by the way, I, I concur. I, yeah. I support that movement. Not, not, not the movement into the Ukraine. <laughs> the movement suggested by you. Uh, right. Yeah. Marion Schwed, uh, there's an air of inevitability about mm. this, isn't there? It's the Joinger Berget, it's the Harold Bratback, it's the Mo Bangura. Henry Larson, of course. But Mo Bangura trying oh, to he put us out here when he pl- was still on the books of the club. <laughs> what did Neil Lennon say? <laughs> if, he th- if he cares about his career, he won't play that day. <laughs> Mental. It's not. It's not his fault. We no, loaned him to no. another club and didn't put a clause in the contract. No, I know. So it, it's. It seems like it's everything's gearing towards Marion Schwed joining that elite club of a uh, superstars who have done that against Celtic, who have flopped for us. We've all sneered at them and they've come back and haunted us in Europe. It's up to Celtic to stop that uh, because. We certainly don't want Marianne Schwed because it'll become unbearable about mm. how, you know, if we wasted him, we wasted his talent and all that. We gave him a, an opportunity. He couldn't, was he, rubbish. He, he couldn't, was I, rubbish. Couldn't care less. His attitude was absolutely stinking from every report I've ever heard mm. about the guy. And you know what? Good for him if he's found a home, which quite literally is his home. Yeah. And every time he leaves that home, he's no any good. Then good. I hope, he, I hope he's, his, his career starts as of next Monday, not not just, this week. Can just I? just having a look at these games of Melly and all the praise that we've just doled out to the Celtic team and how we're proud of them and all that sort of stuff. At the end of the day, there is a competition here that we want to do well in, that we want to progress in. And whilst you're happy to have the performance but a defeat against Real Madrid, picking up no points and losing three goals, you're not going to give that pass throughout the rest of the tournament because what no. happens is you're out of the tournament you're, you don't progress you don't drop into any other competitions you're out in your arse and you've got a terrible record so we need to combine the performance and start picking up points don't we and on, more importantly we have to start picking up points on the road mm, because yeah. Shakhtar beating Leipzig sort of threw a, a spanner on the works for us a wee bit it sure did and look the Real Madrid game and performance will look silly if we do end up with hardly any uh, like zero points mm. and you'll just go well do you know what it didn't really matter yeah. because you need to take that performance into the next game and I believe if we perform like that and the game's coming up we can get something out of it we have to take the belief out of that game take the positives and go on there Chattar will be difficult it's in Warsaw but Celtic need to target these four games in the middle here between the two Real Madrid games and get points out of them I think as we've seen with the Shakhtar game as you said teams are going to take points off each other Celtic need to be doing that yes. we need mm. to try and get ooh, Eight to ten points, maybe, in this, big which ask. is a very big ask. But even even when Celtic get those points, we never seem to go through it. Other teams in, from this <laughs> yeah. country seem to get less than that and go through. So it would be nice to get that slice of luck. So look, Celtic just need to go there and play their game. We we can't deviate for that. We need to go there and play our game. And ultimately, if we go a goal down, the game's not over. There's mm. still plenty of time in it because we are going to concede away from home. Yeah. Just don't let in too many. One small positive from from this weekend's events as well is that um, we've had a rest. You know, there can't really be any excuses. We didn't have to go and suffer the the, the ignominy of playing against Livingston oh, the weekend. True, yeah. uh, so we have had. Uh, I mean, it must be very rare to go from one Champions League to another. I can't remember the last time that could possibly have happened with no league games or. or Cup or anything in between so there is uh, uh, there is the small positive to take from that that anyone who was struggling Kyogo I presume will be back fit because he came off the bench against Real Madrid they almost scored as well I forgot about that one mm. see the what Jota hit a volleyed cross and then it just kind of hit off Kyogo's knee and oh, basically I... looped over the, the far corner that I get one of that could possibly have gone in as well that's just another one of those sliding doors moments but uh, we should have players back. Starfelt, I think, will probably be too early for him as well. But other than that, it seems to be a, a clean bill of health, as yeah. they say. Rest rest of the weekend, we've not, been, we've not spent the weekend getting booted up and doing the, the pitch by, by Livingston. So hopefully that, that plays into our favour. Uh, the only thing about the Livingston game being off is what I was really looking forward to seeing Mora Haksabanovic when yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I thought he did a, a good cameo yeah. when he came on. And I thought, you know what, see if we can get him playing and then maybe get some game time and then we'll see him against Shakhtar because I just feel like there's going to be a game where he just comes on and we're like, right, it's him and Jota now. It's yeah. him and Jota and that's it. I think he's going to be a good player. So I was looking forward to that. Hopefully we we'll organise some sort of bounce game or something at the weekend. But I'd really like to see him and just see how he gets on. I was looking forward to that. Hey, just finish up. How did Rangers go on in Europe? I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say that it is okay, right? It's, it's fine to lose to a European giant. 3-0 is fine. No more than that. No, no more than that. You're, you're pushing Did they it lose 4-0? <laughs> yeah. Again. Bad week for Rangers fans. Eh? <laughs> and on that, uh, we shall wrap up. Thank you so much for watching and listening. 